Hello and welcome to this training video on setting up and performing a TCAS dynamic intruder test using the AVX 10K Flightline test set from Biavi Solutions. With the TCAS application, you can set up one dynamic intruder to trigger audible advisories and paint a target on the TCAS unit under test. In this video, we will be discussing the settings and procedures for TCAS testing. We will look at saving test generator parameters and viewing the results. We will also look at saving custom scenarios. After turning on your test set, open the TCAS target generation ribbon and select the TCAS application. Before we start our testing, let's go over the unique test setup parameters. The common test setup parameters, like test method, gain and loss settings, and UUT address have all been covered in our video titled, Standard System Settings and General Preferences. Please note, when TCAS testing with the Viavi TC201A coupler, it is important to follow the documentation that comes with the TC201A coupler as it diverges from normal coupled connection settings. In this instance, the antenna port on the AVX10K is used even when testing in the direct with coupler mode. The unique settings include test set address, which is simply the hex address of the simulated intruder. This should be anything different than the UUT address. Squitters can be set to on or off, and controls whether the test set will only respond to interrogations or will also include squittered information. Typically, this is set to the on condition. Altitude reporting can be set to on or off. This setting determines whether the information supplied by the test set includes altitude data. For successful target generation, this must be left in the on condition. Displayed altitude can be set to absolute or relative and determines how the values of altitude are displayed during testing. When set to absolute, the altitude values will be referenced from the ground. And when set to relative, the values will be the altitude difference of the UUT altitude and the intruder altitude. Once you have completed the setup parameters, the next step is to select an intruder scenario. This is done by clicking on the scenario field. A number of CAN scenarios have been included, or you can create your own custom scenario. The CAN scenarios include a plus or minus 3500 foot collision or flyby, and a plus or minus 200 foot collision or flyby. A collision scenario will bring the relative altitude to zero when the distance hits zero feet. Before running a test scenario, the aircraft under test needs to be set to an airborne condition, and altitude needs to be simulated using an air data test set. Once a scenario has been loaded, any of the values displayed with a blue background can be changed as desired. The most important entry is the aircraft barrow test altitude field, which should match the altitude of the unit under test. Note, care should be taken when testing over the air as this target may appear on other nearby aircraft displays. You could start the scenario now and for most testing, running with a CAN scenario should paint a target and trigger advisories as needed. However, procedures may dictate that additional parameters need to be adjusted, so we will briefly discuss the TCAS type and intruder type fields. All of the CAN scenarios, Configure the TCAS type to TCAS2 and the intruder type to mode S. This setting drives the surveillance and broadcast monitor tabs to be displayed. If your task list or test procedure references whisper shot steps, you will need to change TCAS type to BTAS, which is the traffic advisory system, or to TCAS1. The intruder type changes to at crabs and the surveillance and broadcast tabs are replaced by a new whisper shot tab. This also happens if TCAS type is left on TCAS2 and intruder type is toggled to at crabs. Whisper Shout provides an additional attenuation setting that allows for shifting the power levels so that sufficient responses are elicited from all the targets of interest. The value can be changed with the soft keys or by clicking on the attenuation value. If you have modified a CAN scenario and wish to save it, Click on the scenario field, scroll down to one of the custom fields and click on one to enter the name for your new scenario. Once that is entered, click the Save Scenario soft key. The saved scenario will be retained, and you can load it anytime in the future. 
Once everything is set up, press the Run key to start the scenario. Scroll down to view the range, threat status and encounter time fields to correlate with what is being displayed on the TCAS unit under test. Regarding the threat status field, non-threat is displayed when range is greater than 4 nautical miles and encounter time is greater than 40 seconds. Proximity will be displayed when range is less than 4 nautical miles and encounter time is greater than 40 seconds. Traffic will be displayed when encounter time is less than 40 seconds and greater than 25 seconds. And resolution will be displayed when encounter time is less than 25 seconds. Slide right or click on other tabs to see additional transmitted data. Once satisfied that the TCAS unit under test is operational, press stop to complete the test. This is an example of TCAS target generation in action. Traffic, traffic. Descend, descend. Increase, descend. Increase, descend. If desired, you can save the TCAS settings by clicking the Save Profile button. Files can be synced to Strata Sync and can be viewed locally by swiping down on the system tray at the top and clicking on View Reports. Select the TCAS report to view. The information saved here is the data used to generate the scenario. The experts at Viavi Solutions are ready to answer your questions about using the AVX10K. Send your questions or comments to americas.service at viavisolutions.com or call 1-800-835-2350.